In today's video, we're going to do a clothing haul, which I haven't done in a while. It seems like many of you really like the hard goods or other items that I'm picking up, but I do like to stay true to the name Lavender Clothesline, and I even recently talked about changing my name, which I was half kidding, and many of you just said, oh no, don't change it, so thank you so much for that. Welcome. If you're new here, my name is Karen and I am Lavender Clothesline here on YouTube, also on eBay and Instagram. I sell full time for a living. I mainly sell used items, including clothing. Now, some of this clothing on the rack might be new. I will mention it when it is. But for the most part, these are clothing items that I find mainly at thrift stores. I have gotten to a few yard sales this summer, but it's been far and few between. I think I've gone yard sales three times because when I go to thrift stores there's much more inventory like at a yard sale you might find maybe a hundred pieces maybe not even but thrift stores as we know are just inundated with clothing all right so welcome hit that like and subscribe button today we're doing a clothing haul So I'm just going to take pieces off of the rack. I don't think I'll get through all of this. I don't think you guys would want to sit through all of this. A lot of it, as I always say, is bread and butter items. Our bread and butter items is bread and butter items, something like that. And some of these pieces are from a sale I hit. I will try to put in the uh, description below, which is the little gray arrow, the name of the store that had the sale. The sale is on Saturdays and it's something like Care and Share. That might even be it. That'll be amazing if I remember that. So hopefully this distance from the camera right now, I'm probably about three feet, is good enough to see the item I'll be walking back and coming a little bit forward uh, to show you the tags. Right now I only have one light on. We'll see if that works. Sometimes when I over brighten a video because certain rooms in my house are dark, this room has a tendency to be really dark when the sun is not shining and then all of a sudden the sun will come out and the, and the lighting changes. So it's a challenge for me as a YouTube creator in a room that constantly changes to get my lighting right. But let's get going. Let's start out. So these items were in the sale. Oh, maybe even the tag says it. Oh, Karen Cher. Who's better than me? <laughs> uh, thrift Shoppers. I don't know what town this is in. It, I'm in Pennsylvania, so I'm guessing you can Google it. So blue tag that day was 75% off, and I'm not going to do the math through the whole video, but when I know it, I will try to remember. I did pick up a dress barn women's suit, size 16. It is a beautiful brown jacket and pants. When I first started selling on eBay, I used to pick up quite a bit of Dressborn and it was a good solid brand for reselling for me. I don't know what made me stop picking it up, but $8 became $2 for two pieces. That's a dollar a piece. I know that I can make profit on this beautiful condition. You know what? It feels like silk. Let me see if I can look quickly. Silk, 100%. The hand knows. All right, so that is item number one, $2 for the two pieces. I'm imagining maybe $25 for the set and the buyer pays shipping. Next up, the same sale, blue tag, and this one again, $8, is a beautiful tuxedo pant. I'm going to see if I can unclip this for us and put the jacket to the side. So a tuxedo pant is when there is a ribbon of some sort running down the side of a leg. I'm sure you all know tuxedos, but even in women's clothing, when there is a strip of some sort, whether it's in a workout pant, a dress pant, or jeans, you can call it tuxedo pant. And what size is this? This is a 30 by 30 International Concepts. So I think it's INC International Concepts. I got the pants. And look at this jacket. This is stunning. I think this might fit me. Is this an eight also? Oh, the jacket is an extra small. So the jacket is running smaller than the pants. The pants being a 30, you know what? A 30 might be okay for an extra small because I think a small is a 32. So I will double check on that. Just beautiful. It's got like a real uh, shine to it, real glitzy glimmer and uh, $2 for the two pieces, that's a win. Same sale, blue tag, $6, and it was 75% off. 
So what is that? A dollar fifty? Dollar fifty and dollar fifty is thirty. I always have to do that. This is a beautiful dress. It is a mock two piece. That means that the dress is sewn into the jacket. You can't take them apart. Dress barn size sixteen. Maybe the same person donated it as the brown suit. So I said yes to this piece. I think this is great for Mother of the Bride, for a wedding, and I expect to do well with this. Two dollars, it's in great shape. Probably, I'm gonna guess, maybe 28, something like that. Next item is a swimsuit, and it is a tank. It's probably a plus size 3X, and it was $7.99 blue tag, $2 I paid for it. Really nice condition. With swimsuits, I always check the bust area and the crotch area because it seems like those two areas, if the suit is gonna have damage, it'll be there. You'll have a problem with either the elastic on the leg in the crotch area. So I always give bathing suits a little tug. Older swimsuits, like vintage ones, often the elastic can be rotted. And you go to give it the little stretch test and it doesn't go back. You can feel it. It almost makes a noise like a rotted rubber band. Horrible. So when I buy swimwear, I always test the elastic, even if it's not vintage, because we all know chlorine, sun, salt, you know, all of those things are enemies of cloth. So you want to make sure when you pick up swimwear of any type, it's a good idea to test the elastic. This Next item is a two-piece. It is a dress. I'm going to stand back so you can see it. And a little bolero jacket. And $6.99 was the price. I don't think this was on sale, but I felt that this was good enough uh, at $7 that I could make good profit on this. Really beautiful. Again, Jessica Howard. I don't always pick up Jessica Howard. It's one of the brands that I'm judging by the piece or by the two pieces to see if it's something that I'm attracted to. I especially like when dresses are like this and they have this multi ruffle tiered look, especially if a woman is a little bit bigger of a size and her tummy might be a problem area. I think this is a great style. It is like a faux top, so it looks like a top and a skirt. And like I said, the whole skirt is pleated or tiered, I should say. So I said yes to that. This was probably a mistake. I was just throwing things in the cart. This is Chico's 2, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, 2 is, I think, a 12. Don't quote me on that. And it was in the blue tag sale. It was a dollar. So how could you make a mistake with a dollar? I think I'm going to sit on this for a long time. But you guys know me. When I have plenty of capital and storage space, I don't mind putting out a dollar. I don't mind picking up something that's going to be a little bit of a longer tail. But if I was to look at this again, I probably would not have picked this up. It is a tunic sweater and it's okay. It's in good, good enough shape, but I don't think anything is that special about it. I don't think this is going to translate in photos to where a buyer is looking for a sweater and they just fall in love with this. I think the best feature of this is that it's a bluish purple color. That might help it. The next piece off the rack is a Karen Kane Zero X. So I'm not exactly sure. I guess that's between, maybe it's an extra large. What is Zero X? I don't like when brands have vanity sizing or their own sizing. Just make everything <laughs> a standard size. Help us out here. All right, Karen Kane, I do very much like this. It is a velvet tunic with the solid banded bottom. Karen Kane makes some pretty items, and I have sold quite a bit of Karen Kane. I think it's sold in department stores, don't quote me on that, and this was $4.99, so I went ahead and picked it up. Even though it's a 0X, you guys might see me wearing this in a video. This is very much my style. And um, you know me, I don't care what size things are unless it's falling off my body. I care if it's too small and I can't get it on, then I definitely care. But if something is bigger, I kind of like a flowy leg and look, look for myself, comfortable. I even like Eileen Fisher. I don't wear a lot of Eileen Fisher, but my point is when something is a little bit big, and it's cut this way that it can just drape. It's a velvet. I think women are more flexible buying items that might be a little bit bigger than their size. But this Karen Kane, I might keep for myself. I haven't tried it on yet. Nothing steamed or anything. So I will be doing that right after this. 
Okay, just a pair of Nike joggers or track pants, 350. Oh, not Nike, my mistake, Under Armour. I probably just threw this in the cart because it was $3.50 and I felt I could probably get maybe $15 to $18 for it. This next piece I found in East Earl Goodwill. I think you guys might have seen that when I was thrifting. And Roger and I went thrifting for the day and this piece, I didn't care what the tag was. I love pieces like this. These elephants are all appliqued and embroidered. So I thought this was great, and what did I pay for it? $4.99. I would have liked it better if it was $3, $2.50, but uh, I think it'll do well, and I think I'll probably get, I'm going to say about $16 for it. So as you can tell, the names that I've been talking about aren't really bolos. They're not woohoos. If you don't know what bolo is, it's be on the lookout for. That means the brand is especially desirable. But the brands that I'm showing you here today, a lot of people would just pass up. And I do okay with these brands. But my one hint that I always repeat myself is judge by the condition, the quality, the style. So even if you have a brand that's not that great, I have sold items for great money in like H&M, which is not great quality. Quite a few mall store brands. Old Navy, I have gotten really good money for Old Navy dresses. So don't always pass by a name that you feel the comps aren't good. Judge the piece by how trendy it is, who would want it. You know, be a little flexible. For the most part, if you're new to selling, you do want to use those lists or most of all run comps for what items are bringing. But this was $4.99. This is Marla White. I don't find Marla White too much anymore, but I did like this because it is a lag and look champagne gold lightweight jacket. To me, there were so many uses for this. A woman could wear this with jeans and boots out to dinner. She could put this over an evening dress at a wedding. I mean, this just is so versatile. And I will try to put keywords that, um, you know, that really relay that. I do love this kind of collar. It's a very um, wide collar. It's not a, I'm trying to remember, artist collar. I don't think it's an artist collar. You can actually Google collar charts and all the different collars come up. I love doing stuff like that. That's why I said yes to this. I'm thinking I'm probably going to charge 22 to 25. This next item I pulled off the back of the rack because I don't want to forget to talk about it. This is a genuine wool military coat. So you can see that it has the brass buttons it's in a navy blue. There is the numbering. A lot of times you find the service person's name in the coat or jacket. I have a tendency not to pick up the really old ones that have like a lot of moth damage or just really musty. None of those. This one is supremely clean. It's just beautiful. It has the maker's tag in it. So these were made, I believe, by this brand. It's got a dog, and what does that even say? Rapson, R-A-P-P-S-O-N, it looks like. I'm going to have to comp that. But the, the coat is just beautiful, and I think quite a few men would wear a jacket or a coat, I should say, like this. 100% wool, double-breasted. You could even call it a pea coat and get away with it. A pea coat is a little bit shorter, and I paid $10.25 for it. But I expect to do well with this. I will report back on Instagram with this one so you guys can see what kind of money a military coat brings for me. So I was walking down a thrift store aisle and just touching the edges of the clothing. Sometimes when I don't have enough time to go through all of the racks, which usually I don't, I will go up and down the aisles and just feel the clothing as I go along. My hand stopped for this one. I looked at the tag. I've never heard of this tag, which doesn't mean a lot. Lunia, L-U-N-Y-A. And I was like, Lunya or Lunya, what is that? I don't even know. 350 for the top. And first I was like, gee, that's something I would like to wear. It's not overly like mushy soft, but it's got a real velvet feel to the cotton. I don't even think this is cotton. I'm guessing it's Modell. I have not even looked. Well, I won't take time now to look for it because I don't see a tag in it. But one of the things that was a telltale sign for me to look further at this item is it's got a little extra tag on the hem. 
Now I know any brand can do that, but the more details that are sewn on an item, the more detail put into an item, the more it's gonna cost the maker to make it. So if you find something that's heavily branded, the buttons have the name of the company, it has extra tags, extra branding on it. When some company really brands itself, that all takes money, and they're not gonna do it if their price point is gonna be low. So if they expect to sell a certain top for say $12 in kind of like an H&M place or you know one of those stores of Forever 21, they're not going to put as much work into it. They want those things just to be able to be produced for the cheapest amount of money. And sure enough, when I looked up this company, these pieces bring very good money. So $350, it looks like it hasn't been even worn. I really should look for the material content to see if I can find it for you guys. And I'm not seeing any kind of label of what this is made out of. I'm really gonna have to hunt. Maybe it's hidden somewhere, but right now I don't feel it and it doesn't look like it's been cut out. So I did pick up this first top and then right by it, I found this sleeveless tank. And then I was starting to catch on. This is like yoga clothing and this one in black. So again, I'm not seeing any kind of material content information, which very interesting. Up oh, here we go, found it. It's way up underneath almost the arm. And what is this made of? Pima cotton. So the two tanks are Pima cotton. I will check what the other long sleeve is, but uh, if you're not familiar with this brand, you do want to run a comp, L-U-N-Y-A. Next up is a brand I think we all know, Vineyard Vines. I do well with these. This is a woman's size small and it is up price $6.99. So thrift stores definitely know about Vineyard Vines. Really nice condition. I love the pink, kind of hoping it was my size, but it's not. <laughs> and um, yeah, I will always pick up Vineyard Vines if they're at probably $7 or less. Once these go into the $8 to $10 range, I will have to run a comp every time to make sure that my color and the style and the size is bringing the money. Next two pieces are cloth and stone. Cloth and stone used to bring so much money. Now it has really cooled down considerably. And this is the tag. This is just a button down in a lavender color. And I also picked up this one, which this looks more like a dress, a shirt dress. Uh, $5. So $5 for this one, $4.50 for this one. So I said yes to both of them. I don't really do a lot of Halloween clothing, but once in a while I get in a mood and I will put a few costume pieces in my cart if I think they're a little bit unusual, if the price point is good, because once Halloween approaches, many people go online to buy their Halloween costumes and they're looking for specific pieces. So I try to pick up like gold lame shoes or fancy boas, things like that. But these two dresses I thought were especially good. This one is from Spirit, which is a Halloween store. It's a Halloween brand. I think they do the pop-up stores in the mall. And I'm not quite sure. This has the, the caplet shoulders. It's a woman's dress. And it has like leather look braiding. Maybe something for Lord of the Rings or something like that. And what did I pay for this? I paid $3.99. So that was a good buy in price. I imagine maybe $19.99 I'll get for this. And along with that one, I picked up this one. I'm pretty excited about this one and it's got no tags. I think somebody might have made this. I paid $5 for it, but I thought this was really good. I think this might be the little girl, the daughter on the Adams family, something like that. It could also be like goth, Victorian, pearl type buttons or domed buttons uh, down to the lower waist. It's got a princess waist. So a princess waist is when the seam of the waist sits low and it comes to a point or it's rounded. Look at these sleeves. I don't know what this sleeve is called, a puff sleeve? It's not a jabbit. Again, just like collars, you can put types of sleeves in a Google search. I used to do that all the time. I've even printed out charts in a book in case I'm sitting listing something and I can't think of a certain style. I have a loose leaf book, I'll show it to you guys one day, I might have shown it before, where I can just flip to that page 
and show you. You know what? I'm gonna go get the book and show it to you. Okay, so here is a book that I made for myself probably in year one or two of reselling. So it's just a simple loose leaf book and in it I have used page protectors to put information that I constantly use. So this is when I didn't even know about shipping. I created a shipping page for myself to tell me what was considered first class, what was considered priority, weight wise, just on and on, sizes, like extra small is 32 inches to 35 inches, a zero two. So this book, here is a chart on different types of blouses. I just printed this out from a Google search. Here are skirts, dresses. So if you're looking for a certain name, say you have a dress that has an unusual shape, you can look at the chart and have the keyword for what that dress style is. These are uh, necklines. Here's my Chico's chart because a lot of times I didn't know in the beginning that a Chico zero was a woman's four and I like to put those in my title. So this book just goes on and on. This is Flax. Who is this? This is Talbot size chart. This is international size chart so you can translate USA, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Australia, and Japan. So if you have a Japanese kimono and it's in a Japan size 7, you can go across and know that's a USA 4. This is generic sizes, let's see if I have anything else. Then we go into shipping, USPS, all of the information of what you can ship overseas, like uh, leather might not be able to go to a certain country. And yeah, so I keep a book with all of the information, all of the cheats, and eight years in, I'm still using this book. So if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, just create a book for yourself. So when you're sitting listing, you can just use this handy type of guide to help you out. Okay, end of commercial. The next dress we're going to talk about is a brand that I don't pick up often because generally it does not bring any kind of money. This is Club Monaco. So that is the label. And why did I pick this up? I paid $5.50 for this. What? <laughs> Goes to show you, even I make a mistake once in a while. So I'm thinking I could probably get maybe $12 or $15 out of this, but it's going to be a very long sale. So there's proof that even after eight years of thrifting, I still make mistakes. Now, can I sell it? Yes. Is it a beautiful dress? Yes. But Club Monaco is notorious for bringing a lower dollar amount. A lot of times when you look at their solds, it's a lot of offers accepted, which shows me that the seller might be having a hard time getting rid of it. So if I had to do this again, I probably would not buy this dress. Here's another dress that's a hit and miss. I think this one might be okay because it is a size 12, which is helpful. This is Bowdoin. Bowdoin is one of those brands I used to do way better with, and now the market is saturated. When you go on, there's a lot of Bowdoin. People caught on. But I like that it had this twisted bust feature Empire Waist is very popular with a lot of women because the waist is raised. It's under the bust. That's Empire. It's like the Empire style. So, and then it flares out from that. So if the woman wants to have a little bit more comfortability in a dress and wants it to kind of flow over the body, she doesn't want a waistline right where the middle of her stomach is. She will a lot of times go for Empire Waist. So I will definitely put Empire Waist in my keywords. I really like the colorway. I like the print. It's just a gray and um, and kind of like a slate gray, two different grays, and it's a stretch knit. Did I say what I paid for it? I paid $4.99. I think this is one of the pieces that I picked up in the Karen share. It is, but it was not blue tab. So I paid full price, $5.99, but this is moth, M-O-T-H, like the bug. This is anthropology. Again, it's a lot more common, a lot more saturated, but I thought this was very good. It is a wool one button front vest in kind of like a patchwork pattern, very A-line. I tried it on, it's kind of cute. So again, I might keep this one or at least wear it for a little while and then clean it and sell it. Here's a North Face jacket, quilted. It's very like plush fleece, very soft inside. I paid up for this. What did I pay for this? Do we have a tag? Oh, it's blue tag. 
So what does that mean? It means $8. I don't especially think that's horrible, but the North Face moves a lot slower again than it used to. But I said yes to it. Woman size small. I don't know what this will bring. I'm guessing maybe $30, so eight into 30, not horrible, but I think long ago it would have brought more like 50. So the sold prices have come down in North Face unless you have like items specific to the sport of skiing or something like that, or really high-end piece. North Face, the North Face makes beautiful clothing, high-end, along with Arteryx, Patagonia, uh, REI makes some nice things. So it's good to learn your outdoor winter brands for people participating in winter sports. And the last item that we're gonna talk about so this video doesn't turn into two hours is a Batman jacket. And first I saw it and I say, huh, I've never seen that before, which doesn't mean anything. I'm sure there's so much I haven't seen before, but this is Warner Brothers. I like the idea that it has the Warner Brothers tag. To me, that means that it was probably sold in a theme park, an amusement park, or a store, the Warner Brothers store. I think it's called the Warner Brothers Studio Store. So it could be that's the case. Great shape, 550, and because it wasn't sold in like a Kmart or something like that, as far as I can tell, I said yes to it. No, I could be wrong. It could be that Warner Brothers tag was picked up by a Kmart or a Walmart and they sold it, but the quality of the item is pretty good, so I will run comps. I did check in the store, could not find anything like this. Could have been that I just missed it, and a lot of times comps on my phone or something totally different than comps on my computer. Not sure what's going on there. Sometimes I'm in the store and I will check a brand and it will show very good pricing. And then I get home and I'm like, looking on my computer and I'm like, what happened to the mobile pricing? It's a little bit variation there. But anyway, I picked up the Batman jacket. I don't think I'll have a problem selling this. Very fun. And if worse comes to worse, I'll just wear it and be Batman. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me. Stay tuned for shipping, pulling shipping downstairs in case I haven't shown that first. I don't know which order this video is going to be. I don't know if we're showing shipping, pulling shipping first and then this. So sometimes when I create a video in two or three parts, I have to say go out and get what's yours every time and I have to say stay tuned because I don't know the order of my own videos. So crazy. But uh, thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. Okay, so we are going to get started. Today is Tuesday and we have 12 items to ship out. I am down in my basement warehouse, as you can tell, always trying to organize and keep things running smoothly. I am getting some clothing folded and what else? Just switching around bins a little bit. My goal this year is to reconfigure, well, this coming year, reconfigure this whole space so that I can fit even more inventory. Always trying to build the inventory. That is my plan. All right, let's get started. First item is a large vintage running rabbit door stop and that is right down here I recently showed this in a video and when I found it I was hoping it was iron but it is like a plastic resin but he still brought $40 and the buyer paid shipping look how cute he is item number two is a Columbia men's extra large military jacket $24 I don't even know how long I've had this. Sometimes I remember where I got a thing or when I got a thing and sometimes not so much. But here are pretty much jackets at this point. A lot of times I don't fold these down because they take up too much room in the totes or in the bins. So I've learned to just hang them and they're normally covered in plastic. You guys know the routine. All right, I see it right away. I love this jacket. This is really nice, $24. Now, I have been running a 50% off sale in my store, which still leaves me great profit, but helps my items move a little bit quicker in the summer. Because we all know this summer has been especially slow. Um, I attribute it to that a lot of people were on their computer during COVID, and now they're out and about so much more. But I really think that we're going to finish strong the end of this year, so I have been listing as much as possible. And like I said, that jacket sold for $24 and shipping. All right, the next few items, one buyer bought four items. So we're going to pull those four items. The first one is a ceramic bowl with a rainbow stripe. 
and I am looking for that. Call out if you see it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be really good? That would be so good if you guys could just call out if you see it. Hmm, where did I put this? So as you know, even though I'm organized, sometimes it's still a thing with this many items to locate where I put it. Now I could use SKU numbers like a lot of people do, but I'm not a big fan of SKU numbers. I rather use visual and the way that my brain thinks, which is a little scary. And most likely the rainbow bowl will be up on one of the top shelves, this side or this side. So I'm actually going to put the camera down and then pick up when I find it. Like I thought, it was up on a top shelf. Here is a bowl I've had for quite a while, and let me see what this sold for so we can see. This sold for $14.33 and shipping. Now, I will combine the shipping because the buyer bought four items. Anytime there's multiple uh, pieces or multiple items in an order, I'm always happy to combine shipping if the items can be shipped together. Now, a lot of times if I have a heavy iron piece, I have learned to package those pieces separately, like a cast iron pan or something because somehow the ceramic if I put a ceramic in with it it always breaks I don't know what happens at the post office it's all a mystery all right next up is an Easter bunny garland I'm going to click into each thing so we can see what these sold for and probably put them on the screen $15 and they have the multicolored tail this is still part of that large Easter pickup that I picked up this spring and those will be down here all right, Easter shelf sitters, tapestry, Easter linens, bibs might be in here. Let's take a look in here. Oh, this one's empty. I sold out of that one, so that's a good thing. Let's see, Christmas, Easter baskets, quilts, dolls, Easter garland, paper goods. Going to be in that one. Of course, the bin that's in the corner. All right, putting the camera down and picking back up. So here is the box that I've put everything together. I've just consolidated the um, the rest of the Easter paper goods. I'm going to call it garlands, paper plates in this box. Okay, so it's either this one or this one. I think they're the same exact thing. Yeah, they are. So I must have multiples of them. And I'm going to pull this. This is upside down. These little bunnies with the cute cottontails in different colors. Cotton and Company. All right, I'm going to make sure the buyer only ordered one. Yep, quantity of one. Okay, let me see what that same buyer ordered. See if I can figure that out. I believe they ordered the hand-painted bowl. It is a wood bowl. I love this bowl. I can only keep so much, though, so I have learned to not keep much because... As a seller, if you start keeping everything, it turns really not good very fast. She ordered this. This was $18. So the buyer ordered three. And now we'll get the last one, which is a vintage wood divided tray dish bowl, $20. And that is it there. We'll take a look at it. And it will be on the wood shelf. So I just have to find a divided bowl. This shelf is probably my quickest rearranging shelf because I do sell a lot of wood. I just love wood. I think a lot of other people love wood too. Let's see if I can find, oh there's the heart dish. <laughs> this is a comedy wood mask that I recently picked up when I was thrifting with Roger. He actually found that and he said this looks like something you'd buy. I'm like yes please. It's great when we thrift together, we kind of are learning what the other person picks out. It's kind of like two sets of eyes now in the thrift store for both our stores. I have not shared Roger's eBay store because I don't know that, you know, he wants to be as involved in YouTube and, and everything as much as I do. So I always try to respect people's privacy. I'll check with him eventually to see if he wants his store shared. And then I will go ahead and put a link in the video description. All right, the next item is a Limoges France gravy boat. That is upstairs in the china cabinet. And I'm going to go into the original listing. That is it there, $28.25. We'll get that when I go back upstairs. All right, so now I'm going to scroll back to the top. Next up, got those two. Bar 3 Women's Drape Neck Dress. It's orange. I believe that is uh, folded down. That's where I'm going to check. 
So dresses, you know the routine. You guys know the routine around the back wall. It's small and it is a solid. So this would be the bin that it's in right here because dresses, small solids. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. Nope, way too heavy. I would pull my arm out of the socket. All right, putting the camera down. Okay, so we have the bin down and here it is here. Bar three, small dress. That's Lisa's handwriting. Lisa sometimes packs and folds with me. Okay, the next item up is a belt. It's a Miss Me black cowhide leather belt. I'm just gonna grab this dress and go over to the belts. And let me see if I can do this. This brought $15 and this was part of a Miss Me belt pickup that I did, I believe from Goodwill, guys. I just got a bunch of belts. I believe it was a Goodwill. All right, throwing the dress on the table. And let's go over to the belt spin. All right, so I have two belt spins and I have not separated this yet. This either has to be color coded because now it's just two bins with belts and I have to differentiate for myself, but I'm gonna pull this one down and see if it's in here, the Miss Me belt. So even though I don't really use SKU numbers, when I have a lot of something, I put inventory numbers. So as you can see, this is inventory C and inventory C. So it does help out a little bit, but this system is a little bit of digging when you have a lot of the same type of item. I don't know that putting a SKU number would really help that situation, but I almost 99% of the time I find it. <laughs> it's that other 1% that we worry about. All right, bringing this over here. Going on to the next item. The next item is a hat that the buyer was so patient. They messaged me for the inside circumference measurements and it took me two times of them messaging me to get back to them because, here it is here, I've pulled it, because um, I get inundated with messages sometimes, guys. So I'm trying, I try to keep up as one person. You know, it could be a thing, it really could. So I always appreciate when my buyers or prospective buyers have patience. I try to answer any questions that are about orders first, other than DMs in my Instagram, which are crazy out of control. So if you guys ever message me on Instagram, forgive me that I don't get back to my Instagram DMs, I am trying. All right, the Air Jordan shorts that I'm gonna put on the screen, um, those are upstairs because I just listed those and I recognize that they sold fairly quickly, $24.99. The next up is a game that I recognized, even though I don't do a lot of games, I recognized and said, wow, this game, oh, let me leave my phone here, is probably going to be a good game and I comped it and sure enough, it is wingspan, and this is right up here. Make sure I don't take that art print down. This is wingspan, and it's new in box. $40 this brought, plus shipping, and it's a heavy game. So um, if you ever see this game, pick it up. This is a good one, 40 bucks. All right, the next up is a guest men's bomber flight jacket. It is black. I'm gonna bring this over here so we can see. A black leather, is it leather? Faux leather. Okay, guess men. So again, on the jacket rack, most likely. If not, it could be folded, but most likely. Oh, that's a gift. I believe this is it. I'm going to hang it up with this jacket and just make sure it's a medium. Yes, that's it. All right. And I said what that sold for, $21.25. Most times when I find leather jackets in a thrift store, I don't pick them up as a general rule. Now, if I find something really terrific, terrific meaning Indiana Jones, distressed brown leather, bomber style, um, you know, that type of thing, I will pick up. And that's probably why I picked this up because it was a bomber style, but look what it's bringing, $21.25. Because leather is so heavy, I think shipping kills it. So that is that story. All right, I think we have everything. 
So as you guys know, on this side of the basement, this is primarily pretty much all clothing in bins. And I'm realizing that this space here, it's a shipping station. I don't use that often. I'm using it more to store the shipping supplies. Well, one of the places I store, this is the main place I store. Bubble, uh, I'm sorry, packing peanuts there. I always have rolls of bubble wrap. You can tell I need to order some. And I'm thinking if I find another place to put this, I can fit probably two more of these rolling racks here and fit more bins. So I think that's what I might do. I picked these racks up at a company called Seville Classics in California. I bought them there because they are different, much different than the ones you find in the big box stores like Home Depot or Costco or something like that. These are very wide. They are 60 inches, where the ones that you get in the big box stores are 48 inches. And I chose to get these because you can fit three of the huge bins. I use these big bins compared to a lot of sellers use the smaller size. But for me, having more items in one bin just works out. So this probably doesn't translate on camera, but I really like a wide shelving rack to fit a full 12 bins. So that's what might happen. I'm considering that. Or women's jeans is going away. I'm selling out of women's jeans. I would have to figure out where to put pants because pants I'm still picking up. But yeah, that is the thought right now. If I move these racks around and get rid of this shipping station, I don't know. I have to think about that, but um, that's an exciting idea to me. I love having racks on wheels. You guys know me. I love everything on wheels so I could just move my whole life around. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go upstairs and pack and ship and get these items out. Thanks for watching. Go out and get what's yours.